things. Oh, hello. And I am going to do go live. One more thing. And so then give, we'll us, start. Right, give us one second and we will, uh, we are get, getting a couple things square away. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Well, and can you guys tell where I'm at, where I'm at right now? Back. Uh -huh. Because you can appreciate having children of your own. The only place in my house is the closet. Uh -huh. so I'm, I'm sitting in the closet because y'all know my, my office, it's not quiet. It's right next to the kitchen. The boys right. are home. My husband's right. home. So literally hiding in the closet just to talk to y'all. That's awesome. I know. I was thinking maybe he would watch TV with big kids. And I was like, we should have got a babysitter, but he'll be because fine. Because you can appreciate yeah. having children of your own. The only yeah. in my house is the closet. Uh -huh. I'm sitting in the closet because the only my, my office is <laughs> not quiet. It's right next to the kitchen. The boys are. There we go. Okay. All right. So we are getting it started. All right. So welcome. Blow your little horn <laughs> to the cookie or uh, birthday party, cookie dough lunch party. We're so excited for y'all to be here. Um, we are excited to have some awesome guest speakers tonight. We're going to do some really yeah, fun we're stuff. Gonna, we're going we're gonna to have a party. So yeah, it's going to be awesome. We're going to have uh, some giveaways. We're going to do some, um, uh, some special deals that we've been working on, as well as allow people to uh, see the, you know, the launch of the cookie dough on the website. Um, and then we'll have a surprise at the end. Yeah. And so super excited. Thank you all so much for jumping on with us. Uh, if you didn't know, uh, my name is Miguel Sewell and this I'm is Brittany, Brittany Sewell, uh, the founder and creator of Ezra Snacks. And we are super excited and thankful to be on this journey my with y'all. And oh, I can't, my, my, my thing. I can't uh, leave out Ezekiel. Uh, because Ezekiel Sewell, what's this hat? He is 99% of the time the star of uh, the show. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, just real quick before we jump into our um, guest tonight, we, you know, the way we created Ezra Sex was back after we started having kids, we um, realized, after having our first son, we realized how addictive sugar was, refined sugar. And so we made the decision to give up sugar for a little while and for like a year as a challenge. And it changed our life. And now, um, we do our best to not eat refined sugar and we've changed just the whole entire way we ate. Like I am, I always like to say I'm a recovering picky eater because I liked no vegetables and uh, I had to learn to start liking them because I knew what I ate, my kids would eat. And from there, I wrote a sugar-free cookbook with lots of yummy recipes because I knew I could not go my entire life without having like cookies or cookie dough or cake or things like that ever again. And neither could my kids. Therefore, I wrote a cookbook. Um, you can also get that on our website. And from there, people love the recipes, but they always just wanted, they didn't want to necessarily make it. They didn't want to spend the time in the kitchen. They were like, I wish you could just make it for me. And at first we just laughed and we were like, no, but then we realized we can, um, we can make this, um, something that could be in stores for people. We could start making our favorite snacks and make it easier for other families to feed their families good food that fuels their body, uh, that tastes good, but it's healthy for them. So that's kind of how Ezra Snack started. We launched the protein cakes and now the cookie dough. And we were pumped tonight because we love the birthday party. Yeah, I mean, My five-year-old daughter likes it mostly because the sprinkles. I love the texture of it. The taste is out of this world. So we're so pumped to get more people trying it. I would say, I mean, honestly, the birthday cake flavor uh, came out of the idea of um eliza's unicorn party unicorn birthday party you know oh, oh yeah two yeah. years ago um and so i mean we always knew we wanted to uh have a birthday birthday cake uh woman protein cake birthday. but uh with the reality that the cookie dough was uh, has been such a just a really um i don't know birthday. it's done birthday. Mm -hmm. It's done so well, you know, yeah. over the course of, you know, since May when we launched it, uh, that people have jumped on and uh, have is taken off. And so we're super excited with it. Um, but we are. We're going to kick off tonight with our mom guest. So yeah. we're super excited to introduce Amanda Fox. 
So I'll introduce her. How about that? Okay. So Amanda is a full-time working mom of two boys. Uh, she travels half the time. Like she's always on the road. So she's on the go. She's out of the house a lot. She loves what she does. Um, she's got a BS in nutritional science. She's a faster way to fat loss coach. She's a wife of 13 years. Her kids are eight and five. Awesome. Rambunctious growing boys. And her favorite food is shrimp. She loves any workout with front squats. She said wall walls. That's like my least favorite thing ever. And <laughs> more. Uh, she's got nine tattoos and she plans to get more. So she's an awesome mom. Yeah. Super pumped here from her. We honestly, we kind of um, pulled the audience of my personal Facebook to see like what kind of questions people would have for a mom, especially I think people are so intrigued that like she's on the go a lot. She has a career. She's working. She's out of the house. But she still uh, has a passion for healthy eating for her family. So we have some questions for her that came from some of you guys. And so we're pumped to ask her those tonight. So help us welcome Amanda Fox. Hey, I'm, I'm ready. I stretched and everything before this. I'm ready. Uh -huh. right. That's awesome. I'm happy. And while we're chatting with Amanda, if y'all have any questions, yeah. you can ask them in the chat. We'll see if we can get to them. So awesome. Let's so, go. um, we know Amanda is always on the go and always on the run. So how, how does she manage all the moving parts of her uh, career, family, healthy eating and workouts? Great question. So guys, let me tell you that the key to this is finding balance. Just kidding, because there is no balance. Guys. There is no balance. I was really interested. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> okay, so there, there is no balance. It is, but it is truly learning to manage the chaos, right? So being a full-time working mom that travels 50% of the time, having two rambunctious boys, it is very hard to find balance within a structure and a schedule. So what we do to really mitigate that, what my husband and I do together is we plan, right? So having a plan, meaning we plan out the menu for a full week in advance. So when we go grocery shopping on the weekends, whether it's actually going to pick it up or getting a delivery, I have mapped out on a dry erase board exactly what we're eating for dinner every night. The good thing about this is on weeks that I travel, I will batch cook on Sunday and I'll cook all of the protein. So say if we're having enchiladas or tacos on Tuesday, then I will go ahead and make the chicken. I'll shred it. I'll have it all ready. I'll roll it up into the wheat tortillas or gluten-free tortillas, have everything ready so that my husband just has to put it in the oven on Tuesday night cook it and the kids have a solid meal Tuesday while I'm gone. So it's just having that schedule and knowing what you're going to do and prepping within the planning as much as possible. So utilize your Sunday, not only as a day of rest, but spend an hour to at least prep your proteins, chop your vegetables, cut your fruits, definitely wash and cut your produce, get everything ready to go. So when Monday hits and you literally jump out of the bed and you hit the ground running, you don't have to worry about what you're going to be fueling your body with because you've already dedicated time and energy over the weekend. And guys, it's really only maybe an hour, maybe two hours at most to get it done. But that's how you make sure that you are ready for success for the rest of the week and don't have to stress out about what you're eating throughout the day and then come home from work and stuff your face with things that are not good for you. So no balance I don't think exists. It is always chaos, but you learn to manage the chaos by planning and prepping as much as you can, 100%. So you're on, you're on the road quite a bit, you know, we work. Um, and obviously, um, you're, I'm guessing you're flying, you know, to and fro, um, just different locations that you're, you're working at. You know, what are you, what are you doing as far as being healthy? You know, uh, what, are you try, what are you trying to, what are you looking for while you're on the road? So um, I am that horrible person on the airplane that brings hard boiled eggs. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I do love eggs and my boys love eggs. So that's another thing too, parents that I encourage you, if you don't have an egg allergy um, in your household and you're able to introduce eggs early on, hard boiled eggs are the way to go because when you're traveling, even pack lunches, that type of stuff. Hard boiled eggs, 100% are a great protein and a healthy fat source. But anyways, when I'm on the go, literally I, I'm taking my cookie dough. I am also packing my hard boiled eggs. I pack um, tons of vegetables. My favorite snacking veggies um, or fruit is tomatoes. So cherry tomatoes, 
carrots, those types of things. And TSA, as long as you don't literally bring a bucket of produce on, they have no issue when you're traveling, bringing over like, like handful types of stuff. Um, I also bring powders. So guys, I will hundred percent always tell you, get your, your nourishment from whole food sources, but sometimes powders is the way to go, right? Sometimes I have to get my protein, my calories from a protein powder. So I'll do that, but then I'll always bring at least two to three servings of the Ezra Snacks protein cakes. It's super, super easy in a hotel coffee mug, fill it up with water, microwave it. And guys, I've stayed at hotels that don't have microwaves in the hotel room. I will go down to the lobby and ask if I can use the break room that they have there and microwave my protein cakes there. And they always have said yes. Um, but say I, I've just, I've gone through everything, right? I've blown through everything that I've packed. I've eaten all my Ezra Snacks protein cakes, all of my cookie dough. Then what I like to do is go to the grocery store. There's always some sort of grocery store, no matter where I travel, Utah, California, it doesn't matter. I'll stop there and I'll just buy up some easy produce. I'll buy some actual um, deli turkey, some rotisserie chicken, take it back to my room and munch on that. Or I'll take it back to the office and munch on that as well. So I strongly encourage when you are traveling, try to stay away from going to a restaurant unless you have to do a business meeting, unless you have to do a customer dinner, but get your food from whole food sources that you bring yourself that TSA does not have an issue with or go to the grocery store that's local to your hotel or near your workplace and get some good whole foods from you there. You'll feel better while you travel. You won't blow up from flying and all that extra salt that you consume when you go to the restaurants. So highly encourage those two things for sure. That's what I do and that's what helps me tremendously. Oh, that's that's, uh, that's really good insight. Yeah, for sure. So here's the question. You miss a night or something just didn't go right. You weren't planning. Yes. You know, I love like the planning. It does take time and effort, but it's worth it. But what do you do for meals on a busy night when you just like missed it and you have nothing planned or nothing prepped or you ate it all because you were hungry at lunch or something? What do you do? <laughs> yeah. Yes, I will tell you. So uh, fortunately or unfortunately, however you look at it, um, there is an in and out um, that is super close to both of the manufacturing sites that I spend the most time at. So guys, if I if planning has just out the window, it is late at night, I'm leaving the plant, I've, I've been there for 12 hours, I'm starving, I'll go to in and out and I'll get the, the lettuce wrap burger, no cheese, I ask them for extra tomatoes, I do mustard instead of the in and out sauce. And then I'm not gonna lie guys, I'm, I'm a human, I get fries, right? So I don't use the ketchup, high sugar source that, that or a high amount of sugar that's in the ketchup. So I'm eating a lettuce wrap, protein, burger. Sometimes I'll double up on the patties too, if I haven't eaten a lot that day, but just get the lettuce wrap version, extra tomato, mustard, and a side of French fries. And to me, that, that's a whole meal. That's a complete meal. I don't need anything else. I don't need to add a shake on top of that. Get water, don't get a diet soda with it, but in and out is my go-to source. Obviously, if you don't have an in and out nearby and you have literally no time or you haven't been able to plan, I would strongly encourage you to find some sort of deli, maybe like a sandwich shop, something along those lines, and just get yourself a protein sourced meal. So whether that's a salad with a ton of chicken or something and double up on that stuff, um, whether maybe it's a wrap, do that with a side of fruit, or if it's French fries, go for the French fries. Again, you kind of have to figure out what you have, but I would strongly encourage you focus on the protein source and then just build around that. Yeah, that's absolutely. awesome. So, okay, another question, kind of going more towards your kids now, because a lot of moms, I think it's way easier. Well, I say this, I don't know. It feels moms can more focus on themselves. Like, okay, I know I need to go work out, or I know like I'll feed my kids, whatever this is, but I, I gotta eat the salad tonight because I'm trying to do this for me. So how do you create healthy habits for your kids when it hasn't been something you've always done in the past, or if it's new or how do you get them to be healthy along with you and create this? Yeah, that's a great question. And guys, I, I think it's different for every family and different for every kid, but I've heard two things, right? Like try to hide your vegetables any way you possibly can. And so whatever they're eating, maybe they're getting two or three veggies and they don't even know it. I'm, I'm kind of on the other side of it. I, do, I don't want to hide my veggies because I want the boys to, to know that veggies um, give you strength, right? And I don't use the word um, skinny ever in this house. I actually don't even use the word healthy. I, because I have two boys, 
I say strong. These are foods that help you be strong, you know, and the boys always want to flex all the time. So we don't say, oh, these are healthy foods. I say these are strong foods. If you want to keep getting stronger, we eat these foods and we eat them in their truest form. Um, maybe I'll add some ghee, which is clarified butter, a little bit of salt and pepper, and that's it. But I prefer not to hide the veggies. I want them to know what they're eating and why they're eating it. Has that always worked? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. There have even been times where we're sitting at the table and they're, they're picking up each little green bean individually. But what we do is we constantly introduce that, right? Because at some point, and it has worked, they end up expecting it and they grow to like it. There are some vegetables they won't even touch. Brussels sprouts, because they tell me it smells like toots when I make them, they won't touch them. But what I have found is the more I continue to put it in front of them, and try different ways to season it. My boys do like some spicy things. So we've actually chopped up some peppers. We have some spicy um, seasoning that we use. Uh, my husband puts that on them and that encourages them to eat them as well. But for me, telling them that it makes them strong and encouraging them to eat them on a regular basis, not just hiding them or trying to put them in something and hope that they don't notice has really worked for our family. That's awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, I totally agree. I think uh, one thing I've always said is exposure equals preference for kids specifically. Like what you expose them to, you know, it takes a while and sometimes it feels like you're just like, mm -hmm. like they're just saying no, 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 or it's just a fight. But the more you do it, the more it's a habit for you and you keep doing it for them, it does it. So that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So I think people want to know, because if you didn't know, Amanda is the greatest at creating awesome recipes. Like she has fun with our products, all the things she loves. She knows how to like really create fun things with them. Very creative. So we want to know what's your favorite fun recipe to make with our Ezra Snacks cookie dough specifically. Oh, okay. So actually this is an easy one. Cause I'm, I'm a big, like just cups type person. I love bite size, anything that I can just make into a nice single serving, pop it in my mouth and go. Probably my favorite, and I think it was one of the first I did, was just um, taking half a serving, so 15 grams, and doing like that thumbprint um, impression and baking those, and then filling those cups with, I think I did like almond butter, another one, I did a, um, a cocoa and date spread. Oh, yeah. um, date spread, yes. Good. You know what? I think um, I actually, and I didn't post this one, but I made that uh, chia seed jam and then scoop some of that into um, the cups. And I think to me, it's just, it's so versatile for holidays, especially coming up. That is a hundred percent what I'm going to make. Actually, I have a, uh, a mom group women to women's through my church that I'm hosting in a couple of weeks. And that's absolutely what I'm going to make. Cause it's easy for people to grab. I'll have little like the date spread, um, date syrup, um, almond butter, some different fun nut butters and have them scoop it out themselves and they can put whatever they want and eat it. So it's a great, just easy snack. The boys love it too. They prefer just straight peanut butter. And then they'll take the uh, almond whipped cream and literally douse it that you can't even see the cookie at that point. I mean, they just, it's covered, but it's delicious and they love it. And then sometimes they add their own sprinkles. So that for me is, is probably my favorite with the, the Brookie being a close second for sure. Oh yeah. So if you don't know, if she's throwing out some different recipes, if you're on our email list or our text list, we definitely try to send out a lot of these recipes that our snack squad creates. And she's created a lot of them. So if you've seen them, if you tried them, tell us in the comments. So I know some of you have tried some of those. Um, some of the ones, especially with the protein cakes, I had several of you that are on here that have told me you've tried them. So tell us, so she knows like people are trying them, but if you're wondering what they are, make sure you're on that and you'll be getting those in your inbox and stuff. All right, man, the last real, real quick last question. I mean, uh, there's several yes. models on here um, that are just going, that just, you know, go through the gamut of, you know, different life experiences. Uh, any any last, last bit of tips as far as being a mom uh, that you could share? Man, I, I'll tell you guys probably the, the best advice that, that I can tell y'all um, right now because I'm living in it, right? So I've got my eight-year-old son. He's on the spectrum. My my five-year-old son, he's... And I, I'm you guys know I'm, I'm as honest as they come and I share a lot um, on my social media. My five-year-old is... He's got some behavioral issues. I mean, poor Miguel and Brittany, they saw a little bit of it when we were out there a couple of weeks ago. Um, he's... Uh -huh. you know, great kids, but we, I, I pour a lot of myself into that, but 
what I can tell you is there are very many, many moments where it just, it seems too much, right? It seems like it's overwhelming, but, but the thing that I continue to focus on is what is in my control. And what is in my control is what I fuel my body with, how I move my body, and how much water I give my body. So when it seems like life is out of control and there's so many things happening and it's frustrating and you feel like you just can't, focus on what is in your control, which is really those three things, right? So advocate for your own self by fueling your body with whole foods that nourish you, the cookie dough, the protein cakes. Those are fantastic ways to do that, especially while you're on the go. Honor your body by moving it and hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. That's uh, awesome. I mean, yes. I can Super helpful. I mean, I like listen to Amanda Fox. Uh, all day. I mean, no. She uh, definitely has so much inside. wisdom. Yeah. yeah. Just, so I mean, we, we, we've loved uh, growing in a relationship with Amanda Fox and just well, all that she shared with us. And we love that she's on our team. And um, yeah, the insight today and just the, all the moms I got to hear you today uh, has been uh, greatly appreciated. Um, Amanda Fox, she has a brand, uh, the Fasting Fox. Uh, please go uh, follow her. Um, Is there any other way you want to tell people how to connect with you? I put your Instagram in the chat if y'all want to see that and try to get with her on Instagram. Good. Right. Uh, yeah, and you guys, I mean, feel free to message me. Um, if you need help maybe creating however you want to play with the cakes or the dough, let me know. Or if you would need some honest feedback, if you're maybe struggling with some of the things that I'm going through right now, just ping me. I'm an open book. Happy to help. But I love you guys. Thank you all for everything. It's It's a privilege to me. Um, or for me to to even be a part of this, right? It, to me, it's a movement and it's a movement that's here to stay and it's here to grow. So I'm so thankful to be a part of y'all's family, the Ezra Snacks family. And I am, from a personal perspective, thankful that that you guys have these things. They're, they're crucial <laughs> to me. So love you guys and thank y'all. Thank you. Thanks. All right, so we're gonna move along to our next guest, but first, we, do? we have a giveaway. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we're, we're gonna, gonna give away some obviously some birthday party cookie dough so um the first winner you had to be on here live to win we chose a winner 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 randomly while she was speaking and the winner is Lindsay r so if you will i don't know who that is so i can't see your face we don't know who r is but if you will uh chat get on the chat and send us your email i'll get in touch with you and get you some birthday party cookie dough in the mail next week when we ship it out. So congrats. Oh, all right. So our next guest is Nikki. So let's see if I can do this. Right. Hello, there, there she is, are, Nikki. Nikki. So Nikki is our um, nutrition focus. Yeah, we love it. Uh, focused um, guest speaker. So, so many questions for you this uh, week. And we honestly, we had to narrow them down a little bit because there were so many questions. We had to kind of go through them and find the ones we felt like would serve everyone the best. So um, let me tell you about Nikki for a second. She is certified, a certified fitness nutrition specialist, a personal trainer and certified in nutrition. She personally, she has celiac disease and also a daughter who has celiac disease. She's a wife and a mom to two girls. She grew up in Southeast Asia, which is really cool. She's a basic foodie. She mostly loves when other people will cook for her. Um, and she loves finding a good restaurant. And she believes that a good view makes the food taste better. Totally agree. I'm always like, what has the best Man, atmosphere we, of you? We are totally, We're right there with you. Totally with you. I mean, if we go out, out of town, you're like, what is one place we can sit down, <laughs> enjoy, uh, have some food, and uh, enjoy the place. Enjoy the, the place. View. Yeah. yeah. So, well, let's jump right in with some questions because we got a lot for you. So the first question we have for you is what is maybe three to five things you would tell people to pay attention to when they're buying foods? Because we told people, if you could have a nutritionist in your back pocket at the grocery store, what would you ask her? And that was what they asked. Okay. So I always, I am big on macros. I did nutrition in college as well. And we learned about macronutrients way back then. They were just, that's what food is made up of. It's where you get your calories from. So I um, always tell people to look, instead of at total calories, because that doesn't mean much to you unless you, you know, you don't want to see a large number up there, but you might. I mean, if you're buying something like peanut butter, it's going to have a lot of calories. But what those calories are made up of is what's most important. 
So not always total calories is like a, a make or break for buying food. So I tell people to look at their protein. So the first on the list is gonna be your fat and then carbs and protein. Those are the ones that are usually bold and then the ones that, have, that you can see more clearly. Look at those. If you're someone who watches carbs, look at the carbs. If you're someone who watches your fat for, for health reasons, what, you know, look at the fat number. And then I always say look for something that's higher in protein. You want as much protein as possible. Protein is the building blocks of muscle. It is helpful for your hair, skin, and nails because you get a lot of your nutrients from that as well. And then not, not only that, it keeps you full in conjunction with all the other nutrients that we get. So I always tell people look at that. But then, so that's the top three I look at. But then below that, under carbs, I want people to look at fiber and I want people to look at sugar. So fiber is really important. You can eat as healthy as you want, but if you're getting zero, like, so for example, I did an experiment, always experiment myself. The experiment the other day where I ate my normal amount of food and I was tracking it and I wasn't really paying attention to my vegetables or high fiber things. Now being celiac, we don't get a lot of fiber anyways because Fiber comes in a lot of the um, the foods that have gluten, so I don't get a lot of that anyways. But I was down at like five grams of fiber for the day before I logged any vegetables. So I want people to look at fiber and make sure they can get as much fiber as they can because fiber helps your body function. So fiber is very important, and if you have a higher amount of carbs on a food, if it's coming from fiber, then you're gonna be okay. Net carbs are a lie. Net carbs were created a long, like not even a long time ago in the 90s. So I do want people to make sure they look at total carbs. Net carbs are helpful if you are wanting to make sure you are getting a good amount of fiber. But when it comes to digestion and absorption and absorbing calories, what you eat is what you get. So just by subtracting fiber, which is what net carbs are, if you look at your label, it says net carbs. That's just subtracting the fiber. You're still eating it. You're still getting it. So. I, don't, I tell people actually that's one thing not to look for is not look at net carbs because you want fiber and you're going to intake that, you're going to absorb it, so why, why not count it? Um, so I look at that and then also obviously sugar. That's probably actually when I pull up a label and I look at my label of the food that I'm eating, the first thing I look at is sugar. It's never carbs. It's always sugar, then fiber, protein, and fat. And that's what I look for. I want my, when I tell my clients, I... I like them to stick be below nine grams of sugar in anything that doesn't need to have sugar, if that makes sense. Like if you're looking at an apple, you're gonna get a lot more sugar, right? Natural sugar. But if you're looking at anything else, then you want something that's not a lot of sugar. And for me, and what I find is more, I'm all about doable, like what's just realistic. I mean, if I tell someone three grams of sugar, they're gonna be eating nothing. So nine grams or less, eight grams, and you can find a good cereal with eight grams if you're in a cereal, you want less than eight grams. So I, that's because it adds up over the day. You're not just eating eight grams if you, you know, right, one thing. You're gonna be eating that, and you're gonna be eating lunch and a snack and dinner, and that all adds up. So the things I look for are your main macronutrients, high protein, low sugar, a good amount of fiber, whatever that means for you, and then good amount of fat, and then uh, total carbs really just comes down to your fiber and your sugar added together. So. Yeah, I mean, that's a great perspective. That definitely, uh, when uh, there's so many things to look at on a nutritional label, I mean, you can kind of get overwhelmed and it kind of, uh, you essentially get so much overwhelmed that you don't care, you know, in the sense of, yeah. well, I'll just give up, you know, uh, because I don't even know what to look for. Um, I, you know, what I've seen uh, in the health food market is the protein, uh, specifically different types of protein, different types of protein shakes, uh, protein drinks, um, need to drink. and the market yeah. is just kind of exploding with protein uh, drinks. And so what is that, uh, you know, how do you make the best decision on buying protein drinks? Okay. So protein comes down to what you're looking for. Why are you drinking the protein shake? Are you drinking it for protein itself? Then you want something that's just protein right? If you're looking at a meal replacement, then you want something that has protein, fat, and carbs, and probably a lot of added vitamins as well. Um, when it comes to, let's, let's, so let's go ahead and say we're looking for a protein drink, right? So we want just protein. We're trying to fill up that protein intake for the day. You have a lot of options. You've got whey protein, you've got casein protein, you've got um, egg protein and beef protein, all in powder form. And then you have all your vegan proteins as well. So there's a lot out 
there. And I'm going to add in, this is because I have to say it all the time, there is collagen protein, but you should never take all of your protein for the day from collagen. It's an incomplete protein. It doesn't have all of the amino acids that um, a normal protein would have. Like let's say you get, you get a certain amount of protein from your dairy. That same exact protein is not the same in collagen. You're missing this wholly. You're missing some of that amino acids there. So collagen is a type of protein, and nowadays it's just it's blowing up, but it's not complete. So you can have collagen, and you just want to make sure you have other proteins with it. Egg, beef, whey. So whey protein is what we all normally know of as the whey protein powders. That is from dairy. This is itchy. <laughs> um, it's from dairy. And it is, so you've heard of Little Miss Muffet eating her curds and whey. The curds are the chunky, the whey is the liquid. So whey protein powder is that liquid dried up and pulverized into powder. It's still food. It's totally fine. Curd. Uh, I never realized that's what that said. Is that what that said? Right? Curds. There's a lot of hidden things and hidden meanings in all children's things. <laughs> <laughs> So that's where whey protein comes from. And then you've got your casein protein, which is also dairy. That is a slower digesting protein and it has fat in it naturally. So that's why it's slower to digest. And it is also dairy. It is just the, a different protein from dairy. Um, a lot of people are allergic to casein. I am. I'm also like 100% genetically and ungenetically lactose intolerant. But you can find whey protein that is um, lactose free or at least mostly lactose free. So those are the two main dairy ones, casein and whey. And naturally in, um, in nature, it comes whey and casein together in a combination that's usually about 60, 40, 60% whey, 40% casein. So you're just, if you get a protein powder, you're just dividing it up and having it separately. So, and then you've got beef and you've got egg and then all the vegan ones. Vegan ones are, there's so many options out there. I usually do a uh, vegan protein just simply because of the whole dairy situation. And, um, there's so many out there. They are a lot higher in carbs because what is vegan stuff? Vegetables, right? Vegetables are carbs. So they're not bad for you. Carbs are not bad for you, but there's a lot more of that. So if you're, if you try and balance out your nutrition, you still have to think about that, add that in there. Um, and vegan's a great source. It has higher fiber, which is always good. Um, like I said, you've got to have a lot of fiber in your diet. So there's just a lot of sources and it just depends what you want. If you want vegan sources, for protein, there's a lot out there that are good for you. And if you want a normal, regular, just protein powder, there's quite a few brands out there, but you want to find something that has usually, I've lowered it down to 20 grams because the brands with the best flavor have 20 grams of protein, but the most pure brands of protein are 25 grams of protein per serving per scoop, because that's how much is in protein. That's all you can get in protein. One, um, 25 grams of protein is one serving of that protein. So if you're getting like 30 grams, you'll notice it's probably a larger scoop. It goes by, you know, how, how big your scoop is. And they kind of generalize that as they manufacture it. But so I like 25 grams, because that is what I mean to say there is that 25 grams is 100 calories, where if you're to have 20 grams, it's going to look lower calorie, right? But you're only getting 20 grams. Unless you're adding fat to it, then you're going to get the extra calories from the fat but also that adds flavor. So there's a lot to look for, but I always say somewhere between 20 and 25 grams of protein in a serving in one scoop. And then, you know, one gram of fat is okay because a lot of people like to add MCT oil these days and then a carb or two for some flavor. But you can find them just basic 25 grams of protein and that's it. They're not the most tastiest in the world, but they're really good. <laughs> that's awesome, yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's one thing in looking for vegan protein for our protein cakes uh, we were looking for is like that whole full protein powder. And so obviously we wanted to stay away from dairy products because we wanted our products to be something that kids can enjoy. And a lot of kids have intolerances these days. Oh yeah. Dairy here. is, we don't do dairy in my, my house. I mean, we might do yogurt because uh, we'll get high strained yogurt or like Icelandic yogurt, which is triple strain. So it's like as less as we can, but we're all pretty much allergic to dairy over here. And I just, there's no need for them to have it when we can get calcium and vitamin E on other places too. So yeah, <laughs> vegan is, Vegan's not necessarily the best taste. I don't know what you guys use, but it's delicious. I have yet to find a vegan protein that I can drink as a shake. I haven't drank a shake in probably eight years. I bake with my protein, just like you guys do. I bake with my protein powder. So yeah, I, I, I love what you guys do. Whatever you do, don't tell us what it is. <laughs> That's awesome. I'll tell you what, I mean, it, it was a- I Process mean, looking for it all. Process. You know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
So the next question we have for you is, this is a kind of a loaded question. I feel like it is, I mean, you but people asked it. Um, yeah, we we, we have, kind of have answered some, but is there any way to simplify reading nutrition labels? Like if you're going to break it down for moms that just like, they aren't, they're barely doing anything because it just feels way too hard. I mean, the food industry yeah. is hard. So if you're breaking it down for women, for Cross men, people who are just trying, but they don't know even where to start, what's the simplest way you can break down a nutrition label? I would go back to what I said for the first one is simply look at the lower the amount of sugar and the higher amount of fiber, the more natural that food's going to be essentially, unless it's added fiber. Um, I, I personally like to stay away from sugar alcohol because they, they blow my stomach up there. They are not necessarily, there's no studies yet that prove they are unhealthy in smaller doses. But if they blow my stomach up, I for sure, the tiny girls in my house are not going to be feeling pretty good either. So I do tell people, stay away from those unless you, you know, absolutely know you can have them. Yeah. But they are not listed as sugar either. Sometimes mm -hmm. they're listed as fiber, which is okay. why I mentioned that. Because they are listed as a fiber because the body sort of treats them like a fiber. Right. It's right. very complicated. Um, but it's complicated on the label, that's what I mean. But they are sometimes listed as fiber. So you want to make sure that it's a higher amount of fiber and a lower amount of sugar and fewer, if not no, um, sugar alcohols. That's where I would start. For moms are like, how do I figure out what I'm feeding my child is healthy or not? I also like to look at the ingredients list second. So I look at the protein, the fat, the carbs, the fiber, and the sugar, right? The things I mentioned before. And then I skip everything else and I look at the ingredients. So I'm looking at that ingredients list on the bottom. Now, I'm not a proponent of saying if you can't pronounce it, you can't eat it because there's lots of things out there that are healthy that we can't pronounce either. But I look at the length of the list and then I look and I break that list down and see what's in there. So the list should be fairly short because you want something that has more whole foods. The more whole food it is, the yeah. more line, the fewer line items you're going to have because it's, it's like apple chunks and Thanks. oaks and mm -hmm. cinnamon and, you know, things like that, rather than how do they create the flavor to taste <laughs> like cinnamon? Oh, why not use cinnamon? What do you, you know, like, why not just use cinnamon or whatever it is? Yeah. So whatever you have to create, you then have to add to that, that nutrition label. So if it's been created, which I'm not opposed to creation of, of new foods, but again, you want to try and find things that are more whole food. It just makes it a little bit easier to get started, at least when you're reading nutrition labels and trying to break it down. So the fewer the items on the label, the higher the fiber and the lower the sugar and the higher the protein, I would say that's what you want to look at. I mean, and of course, vitamins and minerals, they're all listed on that nutrition label too. They're there. They have to be. But if you look at it, the vitamins are they're, they're always there by a percent, right? They're a percent, four percent of your calcium. Well, that's of someone who is a 2000 calorie diet, the average person eating that amount. So we would then have to go back. And I used to stare at this when I was a kid. All that is why I love this stuff. I think I would stare at the cereal box and I would do the math. Okay. Well, if this is 4% and that like you're literally have to eat 35 cereal bowls to get a hundred percent of your daily vitamin C from Cheerios. <laughs> you know what I mean? so the there are so confusing and they're really so tiny that I always tell people don't really worry about the micronutrients on there because you're going to get those from fruit and vegetables that aren't in that on a label. You know, there's no label on those. Typically there is somewhere, but when you're picking them out of the, the farmer's market, whatever, there's no labels. So those you're going to get your vitamins and minerals from it's the labels on the packages that you want to like look at that protein, fat, carbs, sugar, fiber, and then just make sure that list is not like too bad labels long basically and that's yeah. how i would i would suggest starting that's really good i mean uh i i'll tell you what i mean there was a laundry list of questions uh that we had uh for you i mean it's I, again just yeah. like amanda you just full of insight and uh i, I don't even know where to start know where to go from there because you know in regards such to such good information yeah, yeah because, i talk forever i like to talk a lot no no, no i know it's, it's super, so good no i feel like um, if you want to know more from Nikki, you definitely need to reach out to her. She's got an awesome Instagram also. We'll put it in a minute. We have one more question for her, but I'm just saying, I feel like you have such valuable information for so many people. And 
um yeah it's just so good well, I, would, I would ask you so many more questions would, do you have one more no i, would, I was going to just tell you a story of as far as sugars and sweeteners you know um sugar alcohol specifically you know we we we're always trying new products you know as far as new snack products that are, yeah, are hitting, we are snackers i'm going that Sorry, obviously, <laughs> I have to bet. Um, but there was this donut that came out um, out of Austin, and it was just covered in uh, erythritol, I think, uh, or yeah. I, I don't know, it was erythritol or agalose. But uh, you know, it, it was new. It was kind of and know, it was a donut. That it was, was a donut. You know, we wanted to try something different. And it, you, you eat this, and then you look at the, you look at the label and see how much sugar alcohol they're using just to make this thing sweet. And it's like you you realize that that's why you have to go to the bathroom 10 seconds after you eat it yeah. you know it's yeah. like you be careful. You while trying to buckle your seatbelt the next time you're like what is going on here <laughs> yeah yeah so um it's, it's no joke i mean the the, the industry is using uh is trying to get smarter uh on what they put in the product and, and they're, they're they're doing their due diligence try, trying not to use sugar but at the same time um they're they're kind of cutting corners sometimes uh yeah, when sugar when inherently is not evil it's no. The amount that you eat it in, which is why I yes. love this, because you're eating sweet food in a lower sugar amount without adding all the trying to fool yourself into thinking you're eating something sweet. Like it, you know, sugar itself is not horrible. We just have issues with it, right? So being able to eat lower normal amounts of real sugar is healthier for you than trying to like pretend you're eating a donut slathered in erythritol. Like that just is not. It's just you're just fooling yourself. <laughs> yeah. So okay. what's your what's yeah. your favorite time of day to enjoy as a snack cookie dough? Okay. I eat it, I can tell you three times a day for sure. I wake up and I have some of it because I like it as my pre-workout because I always get my carbs before I work out. And so I will have some to like preemptively cut off my sweet tooth for the day. That's all tricks, yeah. right? I don't yeah. need to have a massive sweet tooth. But when it's there, I'm like, I'm going to have it now. Otherwise, during 2 o'clock hour, when you get crazy. You get whatever. So I have it in the morning to kind of start my day off well. And then I have it in the middle of the day after I work out because it's also carbs post-workout. Then I will have it in the evening because my husband sits on the couch and eats like a gallon of ice cream because the guy's metabolism is just not fair. And he'll have ice cream out of the container and I will have the sweetness from this with like whipped cream on top or something. That's awesome. <laughs> I love hearing that. That's awesome. Okay, so how do we connect with you? I mean, yeah. I, I, I want to connect to you just because you're full of insight. And because you're talking about doing math on the back of a cereal box, and, and that's like, what yeah, I do. I, I do math on the back. I see my daughter doing, and I'm like, oh, what did I do? <laughs> hey, that's awesome. But tell people where they can find you, where they can connect with you, how they can work with you. Um, if they want to. Instagram, Nikki, and I C C I underscore stressless. It's one word. Um. And that's, I'm on Facebook and all that too, but it's that same everywhere. Um, yeah. And you can always email me. My email is nikki.stressless at gmail. So that's it. You can find me there. I always answer. And I always like to answer questions and talk and educate. So uh, help me understand stressless lifestyles. I mean, let's stress less your, the brand. Uh, what are y'all, what's, uh, share, share with the kind of the. the so stressless became, comes from. It's kind of, well, I have um, generalized anxiety. I also have postpartum anxiety and depression. So I stress a lot. Like I think I was born a stress case. And so stress less, one, is a reminder for myself to just try and stress less, try being the operative word. But also I can take the stress off other people when it comes to trying to figure out how to live a healthy lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It is stressful trying to learn what to eat, right? How to figure yeah. out your numbers and all that stuff. So I can take that stress away. You stress less. I'm already stressing enough for the rest of the world. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Nikki. I mean, uh, it was, it's been a huge pleasure. And uh, thank you so much for being on our team uh, and sharing uh, your insight and the uh, the protein cake. Uh, so the cookie dough with everyone. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. That was awesome. Okay. So uh, we're going to we're going to do something uh, fun. Um, we uh, have you know obviously we came out you know we have these t-shirts that came out uh, when we launched, uh, but then we came out uh, with this with one, the, these new uh, Texas tees, and um, it's if you notice it resembles the, uh, same. 
the same the same uh, team, coach yeah. team. Um, and so we um, obviously we we love Texas. I mean, we uh, what can I say? The best best election. state uh, uh, in Texas or in, in, in the United States. But um, no, I, I, I'm joking. That's um, that shirt's gonna go to a lucky winner, uh, uh, Sarah. I don't know Sarah's last name. Me either, um, but, but congrats! Congratulations! You're gonna get um, some a Texas tea, but I, at the same time, we're gonna throw in some cookie dough uh, for you as well. And so, because it's a cookie dough launch, so so congratulations, Sarah. Uh, if I hope you don't already have the shirt. If you don't have this one, you can have that one. <laughs> um, but. Um, Congratulations. We're gonna, we're gonna send you a t-shirt for being on. Thank you so much yeah, for thanks so much. Connecting. And if you'll just comment your email, we'll email you after. Awesome. Awesome. So next, and um we're going to have um a very special guest. Very I special like guest, yeah. This is gonna be really fun to hear from our next guest, which is Lindsay. Welcome. So the cool thing about Lindsay is just really cool. She's um been a, I'm, I should read it, but I'm just going to tell you because I think it's cool. She was a vegetarian for several years and then she went full vegan and she's been a vegan for uh, two years, but she's also a um, competitive athlete. She is a bikini competitor. So she works hard in the gym. And I know like being a snack uh, company in the vegan world, you hear a lot of questions like, but how do you get enough protein? You're like, I'm sure you're like, yes, roll your eyes. Like how much do you get that? So we're going to talk some about that stuff, but it is intriguing to hear someone who trains so hard and does co competitions and is a vegan. So let me just read this real quick so we can give her her full intro here. Uh, Lindsay is, like I said, a vegan competitor. She was vegetarian for two years. Since then has been a vegan for two and a half years. She's a former marathon runner uh, she turned into a weightlifter. She's in her fourth year as a chemical engineering student. She's married and they have a fur baby. And she loves all things science, math, loves to travel, explore, and experience new cultures. So, y'all, welcome, Lindsay. Yay. Welcome. <laughs> so, so um, we're super excited. She said she just got a spray tan. Are you getting ready for a competition or what? Um, no, I just get spray tans because it looks better in my gym videos. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Um, but I know Miguel did his uh, physique competition several years oh, ago. Oh, yeah. And the tan. even on Yeah, we. I just saw an ad for like a sleeping bag that you sleep in that has a pillow so you don't get your spray tan all over your sheets and like white sheets and hotels and stuff. Oh yeah. Cause my husband joked, he was like, I I'm going to need you to sleep in a tarp in the garage. Like <laughs> yeah. you don't get it everywhere. Yeah. It's a, it's a different world. I mean, I'm only in it for like a second with around town, but yeah. yeah, it is. Okay. So let's jump into some awesome questions. Like I said earlier, if you have some questions, you can uh, put them in the comments in the chat and don't go away. Cause we're still have another giveaway. We are going to tell you an awesome deal that we have for tonight and some other fun things. So let's jump into some questions for Lindsay. How do you fuel your workouts and recovery with being vegan? And this specific question came from someone who has just started um, eating more vegan, raw vegan. And so she's wondering, like, how do you do that? You know, so. Yeah, so definitely fueling and recovery is the most, honestly, recovery is probably the most important part, especially when it comes to building muscle and maintaining muscle. Um, so definitely fueling, you like really want to focus on fueling right before you work out and immediately after. So if you have, you know, if you have two hours before you're going to go to the gym, you can eat something that's a little more heavier, something like oatmeal with protein powder in it and maybe some peanut butter on top. Um, but if you like me, I get up and I pretty much go to the gym within the hour. So I usually go for like a protein mug cake. So there's, cause that's super easy to me. It's got a lot of protein. It's got good carbs. Cause that's what you want. You want protein and carbs right before you're going to go to the gym. And then you want to refuel with protein and carbs. So something quick and easy, like a protein mug cake or protein cookie dough, that's perfect. And then especially after your workout, you want to make sure you're replenishing all that protein and carbs. Cause basically when you're in the gym, you're going to be breaking all of that down. You're going to break down muscle glycogen. So you need to refuel that with protein and carbs. And you want to do that within 30 minutes. So if you've got kind of a long drive home from the gym, it's best to keep something in your car, maybe have a shake prepared or keep protein cookie dough in your car with you. So that way you can snack on that on the way home. And then when you get home, you really want to 
kind of really pack in your, their, your calories. I mean, your post-workout meal should really be the biggest meal of the day. It should be the heaviest meal when it comes to protein and carbs. And pretty much from that, I mean, after that, you want to be eating every few hours because you want to keep your metabolism going because muscle is very calorie hungry. It's active tissue. So it requires calories just to be on your body. So it's going to burn calories throughout the day. That's what makes it amazing for burning fats when it comes to fat loss. If you have a lot of muscle, it's very easy to get the fat off. Um, so you want to make sure that like you're eating throughout the day to keep feeding that muscle so you don't get rid of it. And then when it comes to your rest days, personally on my rest days, I like to eat more because muscle doesn't grow in the gym. It does, you break it down in the gym and then it grows when you're resting and when you're recovering. So recovery days are so, so important. And you really want to make sure that you're really refueling on those days, eating just as much as training days like that, if not more, um, because you really want to feel that recovery and having something like, like I said, you really want it to be lots of protein, lots of carbs. So something that, um, like a protein mug cake, or like I said, my, my favorite post-workout meal is oatmeal with protein powder and peanut butter or almond butter on top. Um, and then, yeah, just make sure you're really focusing on, um, you know, getting that macro balance in and making sure that you're eating enough because a lot of times with vegans, especially, especially when you first go vegan, um, a lot of people, unless you're a junk food vegan, <laughs> um, a lot of people when they first go vegan struggle to eat enough. I noticed that when I first went vegan, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm like, it's hard to hit enough calories. Um, so really making sure that you're learning how to pack in really like good carbs, like, um, potatoes, rice, sweet potatoes, things like that. Um, chickpea pasta is a really good way to pack it into, um, eventually your body does adjust and your body will get hungry again, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, making sure that you're, when you're choosing, you know, snacks that are kind of pre-made, if you're not doing like a whole food route, um, making sure that they, yes, are refined sugar free, making sure that the ingredients are good whole ingredients, which obviously, um, you know, our previous two guests explained how to do that very thoroughly. So, and that, that's the perfect way to do it. It's like making sure that, you know, you're getting that good balance when you're reading a label. So yeah, just making sure that you're getting good protein, good carbs, fuel right before you work out, fuel right after, and then fueling throughout the day and then really hitting hard on those recovery days and rest days. Yeah, when I was training uh, for my, my you know, physique competition, I mean, it was the hardest. Uh, eating was the hardest part. I mean, working out was easy. I mean, yeah, just go to the gym, do the work, and then, you know, go on with your life. But, you know, trying to get the, the, the amount of food that your body needed uh, and proper food uh, really was the hardest part. And then at the same time, when you had your, your cut week, I mean, that was, I mean, talk, talk about crazy. I mean, just, you know, eating uh, uh, that last, you know, five days of cut week uh, was like I, asparagus. Like I can't, yeah, I can't eat asparagus and rice. ever again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, Traveling on the road on I a mean, road trip. So it was like, <laughs> like, I mean, asparagus is the devil now uh, yeah. to me. Uh, no, but um when, how do you accommodate other diet? I mean, um, well, you did. how do you, how do you accommodate other diet restrictions, you know, uh, for people that are gluten-free or nut-free, um, you know, obviously our, um, our brand doesn't necessarily, you know, accommodate actually nut-free, um, besides the, um, one minute protein cake, uh, cinnamon latte, uh, but in that regards, there's, there's definitely a need to, to have some options. Yeah. While well, being vegan and maybe needing gluten-free, like how do you do that? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, definitely what I have found, especially when it comes to kind of pre-made vegan foods is a lot of times, I mean, again, it really does come down to label reading. And as a vegan, if anyone here is vegan, you know, you're a professional label reader. <laughs> Cause like, I mean, you're, even if something says vegan, I like most of the time don't even trust it. I like still have to read all the <laughs> ingredients and make sure. Um, I do find that a lot of pre-made vegan foods happen to be gluten-free as well, um, because, you know, there are a lot of people that go vegan for health reasons, medical reasons, and, you know, a lot of, a lot of people choose vegan foods because of, um, issues with dairy as well. So, you know, and stomach issues, IBS, stuff like that. So 
Um, luckily, there are a lot of things that are vegan and gluten free when it comes to pre made stuff. Um, but generally, you know, a vegan diet, like a whole food plant based diet, is naturally going to be mostly gluten free, except for things like breads and pastas, which I guess that wouldn't really be like the whole foods part anyway. So, um, you know, getting your carbs from things like rice and potatoes, obviously, that's going to be a natural source of carbs that doesn't contain gluten. Um, so sticking to more of that whole food plant-based where you're doing a lot of fruits and vegetables, um, tofu, tempeh are all good options for protein. Um, seitan is one of the biggest protein sources for vegans. It has the highest protein content. A lot of um, like vegan meat alternatives are made, they're, they're seitan, wow. seitan basically. I didn't know that. Um, what's that? I didn't know uh, seitan. I mean, uh, <laughs> I don't think I've ever actually heard that. Yeah, it's um, you, like, unless you were vegan, you've probably never heard of it. Um, every time I mention it to people, they're like, what? Like, what? what, what is that? So um, basically what it is, is it's vital wheat gluten. So it is the protein. It sounds a lot scarier than it is. It's protein that is extracted from the wheat plant. So it is pure plant protein. It comes in a powder form. Like it looks like a flower. And when you mix it with a liquid, it turns into a dough and then you can press it, steam it and grill it, bake it. It literally will look like a breast of chicken and it tastes amazing. You know, um, I do so much research. I mean, I don't know why. I wonder I, if that's what some of those like uh, vegan fried chickens, is that what you would see those made out of? You know oh I'm yeah. Talking? Yeah. So any, like any of those, yeah, vegan chickens, um, that's what it is. It's basically, it's seitan. Yeah. Um, and it has a super high protein content, but because it is it's gluten it's from the wheat plant so it wouldn't be um it wouldn't be good be for gluten. anyone that has celiac or a gluten allergy um unfortunately yeah, yeah. but tofu and tempeh are still great options yeah so when you're looking at you said because someone had asked this and you said even when you see things that say vegan you still like to read the label because you never know so do, are there things you have found hidden on labels and what is that that you would look out for the most it's like it says vegan but if it says this it's really not it's like Yes. Thing, you know, because I have so seen it happen that. before. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have seen it happen before where something will say vegan, and then you read the label, and sometimes things will say milk powder or milk fat. Obviously, that's a dead giveaway, even though because you know when you go to the bottom of the label and it'll say contains Less. you know nuts, eggs, milk. You know it'll say it'll contain major allergens. Sometimes they won't put that it contains milk, but it'll have milk powder in it. Um, so looking out for things like that. Also. Um, what is it like uh, natural flavors? If something says natural flavors, um, you know, if it's labeled as vegan, it, I might do a little more research, but if you're kind of, if you're reading a label and something's not labeled vegan, um, but you're reading the ingredients and you don't see anything that says egg or milk or anything, but then you see natural flavors, um, that is kind of cause for concern because natural flavors really could mean anything. Um, a lot of things, it's really gross, but a lot of things that, um, have vanilla flavoring or like raspberry flavoring. Um, they get the flavoring from the anal glands of beavers. <laughs> not even kidding. Yeah, <laughs> disgusting. Oh, like, vegan or not, that's gross. <laughs> like, oh, yes. um, and sometimes they get it like from crushed up bugs as well. Like it's a whole rabbit hole you can go down. How did anyone ever figured that out? I, exactly. I'm like, who, well, there may have been like a whistleblower somewhere who was like, just so you guys know, this is what's happening. Oh, man. Um, and there are, I can't think of like any off the top of my head, but there are, you know, sometimes they'll call something, something else on a label, but not say exactly what it, it you know what I mean? Um, like they may, they may write out it's IUPAC name, which is um, like it's chemistry name as a chemical engineer. It, it's funny because when I read labels, like I can pronounce everything on the label and I know so I, I thought that was so funny when Nikki mentioned that where people say you know if you can't pronounce it you know don't don't eat it but it's like well I can pronounce everything on that label and she's right I mean there are things that maybe everyone else can't pronounce but they're not necessarily bad for you um, but in that same regard there are things where they almost will try to hide what it is by writing out its chemistry name as opposed to just saying this is milk fat you know so yeah, yeah, yeah. it does take a little bit of research and a little getting used to eventually you will kind of learn um what to look for it's like you do you start to see things so often um also like um dyes so 
like certain blue dyes and certain red dyes sometimes aren't vegan as well. So you, and honestly, Google is your best friend. Like if you're ever, ever in the store and you're a little uncertain about an ingredient, I've pulled my phone out so many times and been like, is the blue number one vegan, you know? So, um, and thankfully Google will, will let you know, so. No, yeah. you know, um, I, I just have a sneaky feeling that um, there's there's a future competitor within our group, you know, of, of women uh, that will become, you know, I don't know who it is, but I mean, uh, but what's, as far as insight, what, uh, what, what have you found the most challenging and most rewarding as being a uh, competitor and being vegan? Um, definitely, I would say um, most rewarding as far as being vegan, um, I would say, well, I mean, to me, so I went vegan for the animals. So to me, that's the most rewarding part is knowing that I'm not hurting animals. I'm not paying anyone to hurt animals. Um, you know, kind of the benefits, the health benefits, honestly, my athletic performance improved so much when I went vegan. Like I saw an immediate change. Like I was able to push harder in the gym. I had more energy. I just saw so many like physical benefits and then obviously health and environmental or environmental benefits. Um, those were kind of a bonus. So to me, the greatest bonus of going vegan is for the animals. Um, the biggest reward competing is I I'm just naturally a very competitive person. Like I said, I used to be a marathon runner and I used to like win marathons. Like I used to win races all the time because I was like, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to win. Um, so that has been a very rewarding experience. And then, um, I would say the most challenging for being vegan is eating out. Um, you know, if we live somewhere where there were a lot of vegan restaurants, it obviously wouldn't be that difficult, but we live in a really small town, um, kind of cornfields, middle of nowhere. So, um, like I'm the only vegan person that I know really, <laughs> like I maybe know two other vegans that live around here. So it's not super common around here. So we don't have, I mean, we definitely don't have any vegan restaurants around here. The closest one is like 45 minutes away. We have some great vegan restaurants, but they're like 45 plus minutes away. Um, but yeah, so I just saw, um, Kitty was saying that grew up in meat central. That's exactly like, oh gosh. it's like, yeah, I, I live, it's all farmers here. So it's like, uh, it, I'm the oddball out as a vegan. So, um, that can be a little challenging is, is going out to eat. I always have to check menus before we go somewhere. Um, a lot of times I make full meals out of sides. Um, again, that's just something you kind of get used to as you've been vegan for a while, you get really used to you know, I can tell you how many times I've, my dinner has been like roasted vegetables and French fries before. Um, you just make it work, but you don't want, you know, it's like, you don't want to say no to an experience just because you're like, okay, wait, like, can I eat any? I mean, I've gone to a steakhouse and, and eaten before. So if I can do it at a steakhouse, I think anybody can. Um, so yeah, I would say that's the most challenging. And then the most challenging part of being a competitor, um, I mean, all of it. <laughs> It is a very rewarding sport, but it is a very intense sport. It's, it's very difficult. Um, Mentally. you know, a lot of, a lot of people can't do it. You know, they try and they're like, this is too hard because bulking, I would say is not that hard. I, I mean, it is because again, it's like trying to push your calories, like way, way up. Like, I mean, the height of my bulk, I was eating 2,900, 3000 calories. And that's a lot of food, especially when you eat very nutritious food as yeah. a vegan 3000 calories is so much food yeah. so trying to pack that in and get comfortable with being uncomfortable because you have to put on body fat in order to build muscle i mean it is kind of that roller coaster and then going into a cut where you are doing you know you're building on your cardio and you're lowering your calories after eating so much and not doing cardio um it it, it gets really hard and it is a mentally difficult sport as well it's it's a mental mind game but it's so rewarding at the end yeah, yeah. that's that's exactly what I was gonna say. Mental, mm -hmm. mental capacity uh it, it stretches your mental capacity to mm -hmm. another level of that uh, yeah just that yeah you, you challenging know. but rewarding yeah for sure but well thank you so much Lindsay. i mean uh again so much insight on different there's a whole nother whole nother um uh, world uh, yeah. with, uh vegan i think um, being, uh, it's just uh, you definitely uh, brought so much value to uh, those that have watched today, and I uh, greatly appreciate your time.
Yeah. Thank so you. tell people where they can connect with you and how they can chat with you more. Um, you can find me on Instagram. My handle is just Lindsay Meish. Um, you can DM me. Sometimes it may take me a few days to get back to you. I just, I do get a lot of messages. So it may take me a few days, um, you know, but I always try to get back to everyone. So, and I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching. So there is a link in my bio to request. You can kind of fill that out and request more info. We can chat about it. Um, I do put a lot of like time and effort into my coaching as well. You get 24 seven access to me. So um, that is always an option as well, especially obviously as a vegan athlete. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, I, I had a coach as well, you know, within when I competed and trained. So I mean, I, I wouldn't, I could recommend completely if you need, if you were starting out or even if you um, had been doing it 10 years, uh, having a coach walk alongside you to um, just keep, keep you positively going, uh, to set, you know, that, that sense of the, uh, you got to eat. I mean, just that the, yeah. Uh, when you eat, when you don't want to eat, they, they they give you that just encouragement to eat and what to eat and how to uh, calculate all the all the you know your macros um, is super helpful uh, to have a coach. So I could recommend enough uh, Lindsay as a coach. Uh, I think like that's great insight. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much, Lindsay. Appreciate it, Lindsay. Thanks for your time. That's awesome. Well, uh, we are going to, to transition uh, to the last uh, bit of news. Um, we have some exciting things. <laughs> we do have some exciting things. That one, a baby was chewing on. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> All right. So one, we want to just say seriously, thank you guys so much. Um, like we kind of told our story at the beginning of how Ezra Shack started. It's our passion to help other families just eat healthy in general. We want to bring y'all, the reason why we did this is we want to bring all different perspectives and content to just give y'all value for moms, for nutrition focus, for vegan focus, just things that are going to help you. And we want to help other families to eat here. It's we're yeah. just really passionate about it. We've seen the way it's uh, transformed our family. That's why we created Ezra Snacks and created um, our products. And so we just want to thank you because without you guys, we couldn't do it. And so yeah, um, I've been saying. I mean, I, I uh, yeah, it's like the same thing. I mean, yeah. um, we we went to a, a doctor's office today to do a snack uh, kind of snack giveaway snack uh, break, snack break uh, for them. And it, you know um, that you you don't get to see a lot of uh behind the scenes of what uh people deal with as far as health goes uh unless sometimes you, unless you're in a hospital or you know in or it's your family or it's your family yeah. I, absolutely unless your family you know um i think health um food is health i mean what you think body matters and i can can't say that enough is that um if, if you if you want to stay healthy i mean uh, make a decision to take care of your body uh, with what you put in it. And so, um, un unfortunately, I, I just, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be long with you. But, you know, when I went to go back to the doctor's office, you know, and they had a birthday party there for someone else, for the doctor, actually. Uh, it was uh, his clinic. You know, they had a, a, a thing of cookies, you know, a thing uh, like Walmart or uh, brand of cookies they were sitting on the side uh and you know you, you saw our cookie dough there and you saw the uh, you saw our cookie dough sitting next to you know their um unhealthy, unhealthy package and i just wanted to like i i wanted i, I wanted it i just want the cookie dough to be elevated more than an unhealthy option yeah um because so many times the unhealthy option is elevated because it's cheaper and it's easy and convenient i guess and so that's why we you know created this to be uh, convenient and um, easy to, to take with you and um, just open it. Yeah, open it. Yeah. So um, that's my rant. I'm just going to make it real quick. Uh, but I do want to say that, you know, we are a small business. So when you're dealing, when you like need something or you message us, or you're texting us, it's us behind it. And so we just want to thank you guys and just know we couldn't do it without you. So anytime you like, share, or yeah. comment on our stuff, it helps us. And so we just want to thank you and just encourage you to tell your friends about Ezra Snacks and share it because it's just such a blessing. It really is. I mean, we, so we, we don't put thousands and thousands of dollars into Facebook marketing or, or uh, the other avenues of marketing that we could. Right. Uh, we wrote, we greatly depend on uh, the word of mouth. We, we just, we, we believe that um, the, the brand and the product will, will show for itself as far as, yes, Ty, huh? <laughs> um, as far as how good, it is now that it is for you. And so um, we just want to say thanks. Yeah. So absolutely. we want to tell you tonight, we have a deal for you guys just for being on here with us. We are going to 
give you the opportunity to get free um, tubs of cookie dough. So all you have to do, we, um, like we said, we made these shirts and the cookie dough to go together. So if you just go grab one of our t-shirts and put this in this in your cart, it should automatically make this free for you. So you can get a free tub of cookie dough. So go do that tonight. And as soon as we're done here, the um, website will be up for you guys to go shop. And you can go ahead and go shop um, our cookie dough right now as soon as we're done. And um, so we just want to kind of for you guys something else we're doing that we're super excited about because it has been a burden for us. And we know it has been for y'all. So I, you know, I, I have been trying to make um, specifically uh, the protein kit, the cookie dough. Uh, more affordable for people to enjoy. I mean, that is and we come out a long, you know, year mission. It's like, okay, let's cut our cost on different things and, and make it more affordable. And so yes, we we create a product that is, you know, now under two dollars. Um, you know, uh, it is like two thirty five per serving, if I'm not mistaken. But you know, I'm continually trying to cut the cost to make it more for one more we're on the way to make it um, cheaper for people to consume. But uh, what I did do and what I did figure out and am trying to do is um, shipping. Shipping is crazy. Uh, and we know how hard it is for people to, you know, tr go buy two tubs of this and then they're paying the same price uh, for shipping. For shipping. If they buy one tub, they're paying more shipping than they are the actual product. And so what we what we did, what I figured out, uh, crunching numbers, is, is making our uh, shipping cheaper. Now it's not it's not gonna be Amazon, you know. You can't uh, do free shipping. It's not gonna be free shipping. Tomorrow. Uh, but um, what we are doing is like we're cutting our we're cutting our costs on shipping, um, and so you'll see it on the website. It's gonna be like uh, it. Well, I will say that it's cheaper. Um, the shipping is cheaper than uh, the uh, one one of these uh, for sure. And so that's that's not just not that's not just for the. Um, cookie dough, but it's also for the protein cakes. So well. the protein cakes So well. cheaper overall, um, uh, I think it's like $4.50 uh, yeah. uh, for shipping and like $6 um, on the protein cakes. And so- um, yeah. So we just so, wanted to do that because we just, and if you're local, don't ever choose cooking, choose local pickup and we'll get it to you because we just don't want you to have to pay shipping because it's terrible. Yeah. Um, also, if you go follow the guest speakers tonight, they all three have a um, that will save you 10% on your order. So just go follow them, grab them on their code at checkout. They'll save you there as well. So we have one more giveaway tonight. One more. Here you go. <laughs> no, you say it while I blow up. Oh, I, was, I thought you were going to say it. Okay. All right. So we're going to give away not only cookie dough, not only a t shirt, but then some other fun swag of Ezra Snacks as well. And so. The winner for tonight. We're gonna give it to is... Kitty Opelinger. Kitty oh, Opelinger. Well, yeah, I I just went for it. You know, even if I didn't say it right, sorry. Um, uh, Kitty Opel Opeling Opelinger. Uh -oh. You got yourself on your head. Kitty, you won. So give us your email in I'm the so curious chat. How you say your name? Yeah. Well, um, we just want to thank everyone for being here tonight. Um, go shop uh, our protein cookie dough. Thanks for joining us. We're excited for you to try it. After you tried it, please come to our website and leave a review and tell us what you think. Because that was and yeah, cheers to you guys. There you go. And happy launch day. Cheers. I right, thank you so much, Amanda Fox, uh, Lindsay, and Nikki. Uh, Nikki for your time. I mean, we couldn't have done this without you. Uh, we really want to bring as much value to uh, our group. Um, and everyone that, that came on today and everyone that's going to watch uh, the uh, video from here on out. And so thank you all so much for your time. I'm sorry I'm uh, we are so long-winded, um, but... Um, Thanks for joining. Y'all are great. See ya. Yeah. Thank you all.